Welcome to the RS2G podcast, where I motivate, inspire listeners by discussing failures, success, and the journey of a rebirth. If you are someone who wants to hear the honest truth from a host that puts his right hand to God as I interview people who have built empires and sometimes watch them crumble as their lives have taken an unexpected twist and turns, this podcast is for you. Life is not always easy. And as a combat military veteran, active military for 14 years, I know about sacrifice and facing fears and true loyalty. I can't wait to take you on this rebirth journey with myself and my guests as we discuss life and living with your right hand to God. Boom. How you doing? Welcome to the RH2G podcast where we inspire and we motivate. And we got a huge guest tonight. And I just want you, you guys, just to welcome Artishi. Give me hey. give, give guys a give a round of applause for hey, Artishi. Uh, she in the building tonight, baby. I, I love it, man. I, I mm-hmm. you know, I saw your growth just explode in the last year and a half. Mm-hmm. And I'm so proud of you. Um, you know, seeing you and what you're doing and your vision, man. But can you tell the world who you are, where you come from? Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, my name is Artist She, like She is Art. That's my publishing company okay. name. I am from Tampa, Florida, born and raised. Okay. Um, it's a vibe all the time over here. Vibe. Yeah. Yeah, I see. It's you. just a vibe. Yeah, I had to come with it tonight. I'm like, you know yeah. what? She gonna come with her <laughs> with her aura in the here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. for sure. That's dope. When when did you know that you was you loved art? I I'll how old say, were you? About five. Five years old. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I um started with reading. I used to love to read. Like, I lived in the library. Okay. So I would read books all the time. And for Christmases, all I wanted was, like, tape recorders all the time. And I would tape record my voice or listen to certain songs and, like, try to run it back. And, Mama, what this word mean? Things like that. Right. Um, But I just always been, I love everything about art. Like, the aesthetics part. Um. Just building. I, I love the concept of just, um, especially well, what I reference it to is like it could be like a scrap of metal on the street that somebody just, they keep kicking it, throwing it away. Right. I'll take that scrap of metal and bend it and flip it and throw paint on it and glitter. And it's yeah. just being able to turn something or what people see as nothing to something great. Wow. Anything, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I always felt like that too growing up. Mm-hmm. Um as a kid, I was very into entwined with uh the intelligence side of how things worked. Mm-hmm. And I, I felt like I was always ahead of my time. Yeah. Um I couldn't draw, but I was mm-hmm. I can do a lot of different things and I was very artistic, you know. Yeah. Um I uh, loved to play the drums. I could I speak at I a, love the yeah, drums. play the drums. Um I could speak at an early age, very mm-hmm. articulate. My father was a bishop, my grandfather was a bishop. Mm-hmm. So I saw them speak. So I thought that okay, I could do a little bit of everything that I like to act, I like to do movies, I like to write right. books. Right. And now you have me here. But it's crazy to hear you 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 said at a young age because you knew already where you was going to be right now. You just didn't know how you was going to get there. Yeah, and sure. that's why we're going to talk about that process mm-hmm. and how you got here. Mm-hmm. What was the first time you wrote your first song? My first song? I probably had to be... I probably was like 10. 10 years old. What was yeah. it about? Um, so, I'm a, like a preacher's kid. So I oh, okay. We church. PKs. Yeah. Okay, we got yeah. it. Yeah. Shout out to Irvin and Truth yeah, Ministries. Yeah, um, down here is... It, now, people... Literally now, it is like called the Performing Arts Church. But what I loved about my pastor is he had a heart for children and arts. Mm. And he didn't shy away from it. Like it wasn't, we didn't put on little church productions. No, he was go big or go home. Wow. I mean, full rehearsals, flag teams, learning how to flip cartwheels. Like Mm. I pretty much went through every type of training that, and and he would do that because he was like, if this, if you have certain kids and this is how they'll reach people, you know, in their own way. You have to invest in them at a level that the world will invest in them. Right. So he was really big on that. Um, so it's actually a song. <laughs> I actually still have people, like, now that we're older, they still come up and be like, remember when you had that church group? And it was this song called Change. Mm. And um, I think I wrote it to the cadence. 
Well, I wrote two songs. One was like to the Janet Jackson offer you um, cadence beat mm -hmm. at the time. And one was change. And that all the girls loved it for some reason. All the kids, like they were singing it all the time. Mm -hmm. They were performing it all the time. Like we was a little church celebrity. Wow, I like that. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. It was a vibe. That's good. And you yeah. wrote that. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you've been a writer for a long time. Oh, yeah. So, I love writing. Yeah. You know, writers are really good uh, thinkers and know how to put it down on paper mm -hmm. so for you to articulate and write not only for yourself you write for everybody else probably too yeah right so you, yeah that's crazy did is either one of your parents in the music industry or just i know you're, um, you say dad's a pastor we pks yeah but did sure. your dad sing before he pre preached oh oh no so um my mom was really the one like with church she's an intercessor um even now like she ministers to women battered women things like that but my mom was really creative. Mm. She was more into that stuff. Like she was in the choir. I would watch her sing. She loved to dance, but she was always so. I used to love like just watching her move. Like we would skate. She would take me to United Skates all the time, and she used to know how to do all of that. Like soul, soul skate, and yeah. you know, just with the movement. So I kind of got some of everything, mm. um, and just loving music. Mm. Really, just vibing, listening to her sing or. Like all the old school music, you picked That's, it up. Yeah, for oh, sure. Like wow. my, like I got an old soul for wow. sure. I know when I met you, you do have an old soul. Yeah, and you're very mature for your age and what you got going on. Mm -hmm. I think the world needs to see because you're very talented too. You have a Thank message. You. So I wanted to bring you on here because I always bring people on here that's very intellectual mm -hmm. that can spotlight um, your motivation, mm -hmm. and your entrepreneur entrepreneurship intellect, mm -hmm. and I want you to tell the world. That you you found music and music found you, but how are you able to maintain what you what you have going on in the business side? On the business side, mm -hmm. um, I just educated myself. One thing I always was big on is uh, I never wanted to just be about beauty. Like I always, especially for my black girls, mm, let's I, talk about it. Yeah, I wanted yeah. them to know that like you can be smart, you can be intellectual. Wow, and you know. Don't just let them hype you about your curves right. and things like that. You know, like you have different assets, right. you know what I'm saying, to you. So I wanted, I just never wanted to be in a position where someone felt like they could manipulate me. Mm. Um, and like Martin Luther King said, you put in the book, we don't read. Yeah. So the fact that I love to read, right. I'm reading everything. Right. It, right. Yeah, it just didn't make sense. Like if I'm reading all these books in the library and I say I want to do music, why am I not reading on certain you know, things as far as the music industry, learning the split sheets. If I say I want to write songs, right. all the different genres, different percentages. Right, right. Like, I just never wanted to be in a room and somebody just throw a paper at me and I just got to believe what they say. Right. And also, yeah. too, you got to understand who you are. Like you mm -hmm. said, as a black woman, you know, that's very powerful because mm -hmm. um, look at society right now. Yeah. And, and look at what's being put out there in mm -hmm. the music. Mm-hmm. And look what's being frowned upon and what's not being frowned upon. And right. I'm not, I, my platform, I don't have nothing to do with none of that. Right, right, right. But I like to talk about the, the intellect. Right. And I have two daughters I'm raising. Mm -hmm. And one is 23 and one is 13. Mm -hmm. And I want them to have good role models or people they look up to. Mm -hmm. But I think it's necessary to have the bad too so you can know what's bad and good. Right. Because right. if there's always a lot of nonsense going on, mm -hmm. like I tell people all the time, I only have an hour in my day for my daily dose of bullshit. And that's <laughs> okay. social media, mm -hmm. um, World Star, mm -hmm. Yahoo, Google. Because after that I need to I need to own my own thoughts. Right. We own our devices all day and we are being um manipulated through what's being posted. Yeah. But if we have the right interjection of what you're trying to do yeah. as a positive black woman mm -hmm. and say, hey, you can sing, you can dance you could do all this. You just don't have to do this, that, and the third. Yeah. So let's talk about that and what kind of music that you put out there and, and what you have, what you have going on right now. Um. So I, I'm real big on women empowerment. Okay. So like your mom. Yeah. 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 I'm really, really big on women empowerment. So I try to even with certain trends, and it's oh, it's nothing wrong with being sexy. It's nothing wrong with um, embracing like your divine feminine because I very much walk in mine. Right. But I just feel like there's a way that um, there's a way that you can move about it. Like I think that 
there's a certain dance and there's a certain confidence that comes with being like, um, how can I put it? I wouldn't even say modest. I say more like be a mystery still. Mm. You know, right? Like you're the catch. Right. Don't make it so easy. Right. Don't make yourself so accessible. Right. You know, make make them have to try to figure out like who I get that all the time. That's why my concept when people used to just see me somewhere, they'll be like, "Who is she?" And it went with, "Art is she?" You know, who's mm. that girl? What does she do? You know, it's just gonna always be something because I can't give it to you. Where's your work? Right. That means you don't have to put no work in or anything. Right. Right. You know, so um, with that, I just felt like. I wanted to show women, like I said, especially with black women, because they always put us in the forefront for like our bodies Mm -hmm. or just being overly sexualized. But we're smart. We're really educated. And we're lovers. And we hold things down. And I feel like sometimes um, they paint us in a light where we're either angry or if we're not angry, then we're ignorant. Mm. And, you know, it's it's so much more layers to us, Mm -hmm. you know. And you don't have to have a, um, you don't have to be so hard and have this demeanor that somebody feels like they gotta beat down f- to be respected. Right, right. You know, definitely. So that's what I try to promote in my music. Like you could feel yourself, you could still be bad and all of that, but right. be smart and always make them respect your intellect right. over anything, because nobody could take your mind. They could take anything from you. Right. Like your physical attributes, like God forbid, but it can be taken from you. Right. So then, what else do you have? Right. And I, I just don't want to be. I'm. I'm. There's nothing surface about me. Right. You so. preach it. I, I yeah. love it too because mm-hmm. that's why I brought you. Because I want the world to see that mm-hmm. not only are you an artist, you're very business, but you're a black woman and you're strong and you, mm-hmm. and you have a good intellect to you and you understand mm-hmm. who you are. I think the most important part too, as um, being that, is mm-hmm. understanding who you are. Yeah. And that's what I try to relay the message to my daughters as just be who you are. Yeah. You don't have to be nobody else. Be authentic, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, and be who you are and understand that there are precursors in life that you have to be able to withstand. Yeah, for and sure. And even it's hard for me sometimes as um, people see me and I might be dressed like this. They don't know I got a master's degree. Right. They don't know I served my country. Right. They don't know I've been in war three times in Iraq and, and two Afghanistan. They mm-hmm. don't know that. They just see the tattoos, the glasses, the Long Beach hat, but if you really unravel that onion, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a I'm a person way better than they ever could be. First of all, I fought for my country. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm completing all these measures. I'm in school for my doctorate. I just completed my project management certification. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's who I am. And that's after me and you met. You, we and me and you met. I was a janitor because I was oh, yeah. going through a situation where I was telling you about the bankruptcy. Yeah. And from then on, I saw you take off. And I'm like, look at that girl. Go, go, go. I was so <laughs> proud of you because you was telling me to come on your podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I'm busy. I'm working. I got yeah. this going on because, I, you know, I'm trying to dig myself out the hole. Mm-hmm. But look how God make things work. Yeah. Now I have it established mm-hmm. with my engineer, my podcast, right hand to God, and you blown up as an artist. And now I get to spotlight you. Look at that. Yeah. Look how the world turns. Yeah. It's alignment. Right. And I am and I was blessed to meet you that day. I think we went to lunch at uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. Yes. And we talked for a long time, too. Yeah. 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 We, we was both going through some things. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, it was good just to meet an honest person. So I thank mm-hmm. you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you know already what time it yeah. is. Yeah, it, it was genuine vibes from the jump, though. Yeah, you know, yeah, for sure. yeah, you know, I'm I'm very very low key, but mm-hmm. I was able to have that that conversation to, you know, to change the narrative of black men. Period. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. we have we have a narrative over us, mm-hmm. and sometimes it can get bad, and sometimes you know we we fight in the middle, in between. Like I had a situation, um, not to babble, mm-hmm. that I prayed to God to complete. A position that I I wanted, mm-hmm. and that was being a project manager. Yeah. And when I got to that pinnacle and got my certification and got hired, mm-hmm. the people didn't even want me. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's like sometimes you have to be careful what you pray for because God wants something else from you. Yeah. But I wanted to do this because I know my other end. I wanted to let the people know from previous that I can do that. Right. Right. Because right. it's progression for me. Right. But God was like, it's timing. Mm-hmm. And and what's crazy is I got what I wanted when I prayed for, but God was like, "That ain't yours. I got something else for you." Right. And I had to listen. That's the hardest part with it us is. is listening. It is the hardest you part because a lot of times we already have it. Like you know, I want to do this, and I. It's so crazy that you say that because that's kind of how I felt. Like even around the time we met. Yeah. And I'm still somewhat in that period, but a transitionary period with a lot of things. 
and just not um I had to really give up the control. Like I think that last year and a half I spent a lot of days crying. Like almost every day. We both. And um I remember when I started even for a while, um, when I started with security and I was doing twelve hour shifts by myself, I felt like God put me in a place where he had to isolate me. And I started to read this book, um, and it was called The Power of God by Pastor po- Pastor Gregory Poe. That's actually my, like when I say preacher's kid, like he kind of like adopted like certain kids where he just was in there, like your parents served under him, mm-hmm. things like that. And I would, he talked about just navigating your emotions mm-hmm. and a lot of things. And just really, I feel like in that period I had to, um, I feel like sometimes when you grow up in the church, you know the word and you know certain things. So as you get older, because the people that are around you, you already have a certain light or a certain thing that they normally don't have. So you're you're kind of like the source. Right. But then it gets to the point where now you've attached yourself to all these people that need this light source. Where Where's yours? Right. Who's feeding you? Right. And for a while you think, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm strong, I'm strong, I'm strong. But then you're taking on these things and you're connecting on to these other soul ties and energies and you're not really feeding your spirit. So now I felt like as I was coming into adulthood as a woman, there were certain things that I, I didn't really know myself anymore. I knew the little girl, you know what I'm saying, mm. that was invested in that and had those seeds sown into her. But I really felt like he isolated me at a time where it was like, you keep trying to search for all these relationships and other people, and I'm right here. Right. So it's like I'm finna break you all the way down. Mm. So you finna sit here. And it's gonna be me and you, and you're gonna deal it. with your stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And who, boy? <laughs> Did you deal with it? Yeah, I'm still uh, dealing. dealing with it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's it's a constant. I feel like um, healing, and especially when, like I said, soul ties and certain things. Once yeah. you attach certain things, it's um, it's an ongoing thing. But I, I tell anybody, I feel like you winning as long as you get up every day and you say I'm trying, you winning. You winning. You gotta yeah. win, man. It's crazy because mm-hmm. the stories match up because mm-hmm. um, I had this huge security company. I don't know if I told you. Oh, um, yeah. I owned Rat Pack Worldwide Security. Mm-hmm. So um, it was really big in Tampa. Um, mm-hmm. I did two Super Bowls. It was really, really big. I had over 300 employees, mm-hmm. and I, I was doing really well, and I wanted it, and I wanted it, and the key word was I wanted it. God mm-hmm. took everything from me and the Range Rover and evicted me from that home and said, hey, you didn't want to listen. Mm-hmm. I'm taking everything away from you. And mm-hmm. when it got quiet... I was like, now you listening, JR? Mm-hmm. You went a long way, but you went a wrong way. So now you listening? I was like, yeah, God, I'm listening now. He said, your whole gift was to be a motivational speaker. Your daddy's a bishop. Your grandfather's were preachers. Mm-hmm. You tell everybody motivational stuff all the time subconsciously. Right. Why not do that? Right. And this year I got my first tour. And I'm, the, and I'm the keynote. So God is good. Mm-hmm. And we can't take nothing away from that because... The message is that we wanted it, but that's not it. God wanted something else. And yeah. look at what you're doing now. When you started to listen, your music became free spirit. And yeah. I saw it. Yeah. I was like, dang, she cranking these singles out like nothing. Mm-hmm. And they all over. And God bless your friend that passed away that mm-hmm. you did a talent show with him, right? Mm-hmm. The, um, I don't know his name. Was it? Um, oh, you talking about. He was like a um, he was a staple in the community for the talent oh, shows. Money. Yes, yeah. money. I met him um, when I was doing Rat Pack Security, mm-hmm. and um, I saw he pass away, and I saw you pay tribute to him, and I saw you did a couple of talent shows with him, and I'm like, mm-hmm. you know what? She's getting out there, she's getting it going. So I will say he was. We didn't. I wish I would have been able to work with him more, but I will say, what I loved about Shamani is he made sure, like, just on the you know on the back end. He would check on me sometimes. Hey, you straight? Like, it's certain people, people don't understand when you're an artist or you're a creative or just when something is on you, when there's a purpose on you and people are so used to you being a strong one, as soon as you're not strong anymore, sometimes people don't know how to handle that. And I feel like I had certain people in my life because me and Shimani, it wasn't like we was like super close, but he was just a person that he never let me forget how talented I was. Right. I have DMs where he literally just used to write me and be like, yo, you talented. As fuck. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he would just or he made sure to always comment on my stuff or he'll send me a showcase whether he knew I was coming or not. Whether I had to work two jobs and I wasn't there, he never he just he never let me forget. You know what I'm saying? Like this this is the thing that 
you shine and this is the thing that makes you you and I feel like we all need people like that in our lives even if I'm not showing up for myself you need people sometimes it's gonna remind you like that light that you had is still in there right and he was just a beautiful person like for doing that because it wasn't you know what I'm saying he wasn't gaining nothing from that right. but he was always like a big supporter whether as soon as if I would go like a wall go ghost as soon as I posted something he would be one of the first people hey I like this giving me feedback things like that so yeah he was he was a pretty dope person I love that for you because he, yeah. he was a good dude too and mm-hmm. um you know rest in peace to to Smarty. but yeah. you know um you you've been mm-hmm. you've been doing your thing. What's next on the market for artists here? Well, right now we swinging. Okay, out now on. Can we put platforms. that on? Can we put her uh, her YouTube swinging video so we can? See oh her? yeah, yeah. Let's see the video real quick. Yeah. I'm from Long Beach, California. I'm born and raised. Now I live in Sarasota. Retired military. I'm a motivational speaker, and that's really big going on right now. And this content creator studio that Jen and Bessie has made is going to be very influential in the community and what's going on right now. Kids and everybody is going to join in with content and come here and leave. Just like the rappers have their studios, we have our studios now. I'm the number one free, a free agent motivational speaker. Catch you later. Yeah, let's, let's tell us. You made a dance to it. Yeah, um, yeah. shout out to Cadre. He's actually um, a, a real dope dance choreographer. We grew up together. Okay. Um, in church okay. as well. Um, that's the that's like a clip of the video. But. Like barbecue music, like yeah, like July, like summertime. That's what yeah, I wanted. Yeah. I wanted something fun. Yeah. I thought that turmoil. Yeah. Time to turn up. Yeah. Yeah. feel good song yeah, I, love I love it, it. it's a feel good no, I love song. it yeah, yeah. yeah did you perform in Cali too yeah oh yeah you know I'm from there I saw I was like why she perform with oh, that's dope yeah yeah, yeah it was lit it, I ain't gonna lie pause it. got a lot of love that's a good video, man. I, I love it. I love the energy. And I, I, that's the one I recently saw, but I saw some more um, last year, too. And I'm mm-hmm. like, you know what? She's on to something. So I'm proud of you. Thank and, you. And um, you was in California. So tell me about that. Oh, that was. And it's so crazy how that happened when you want to talk about alignment. So yeah. when I was going through like my rebranding process and just trying to refine myself yeah. again, um, I started to build my platform on TikTok. And I started just for some reason... I guess I got on one panel and the girl, she was like a gold star on TikTok. So she had all these viewers and stuff like that. And people really liked me. So they would start like just every time they see me, hey, she baby, hey, she baby, things like that. Long story short, I'm getting on there. And one of the girls just happened to see that I did music from a panel. Okay. And she was like, yo, I'm a event curator down here in Cali. I want to fly you out here, take care of everything. And it was so crazy. We had been building a relationship on TikTok for months, me not knowing that she does like music events and her not even knowing I was an artist. She's seen certain like artistic things on TikTok, but they knew me from panels yeah. and us like playing games or having like deep conversations yeah. and things like that. So it's so crazy how that manifested. Right. Yeah. And Look at that. it was it was dope. It was dope. And that's good. When you have the right energy around you, things was just to start to come and start to align. Yeah. You know, um, we met Mm -hmm. at Crunch Gym. I was a janitor. Mm -hmm. And um, you were going through some issues. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you was getting back into the gym. Mm -hmm. And we talked about that. Mm -hmm. And then we talked about a lot of things in life. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you took off. (laughs) I didn't see you no more. You took (laughs) off. And I'm like, did I look up? Are you on the big screen? I'm like, okay. That's what she was doing. So I'm proud of you. Yeah. 
So anything else you got coming after that, like an album? Um, well, I actually, so in this process, we I actually worked on five songs. Okay. And at first I was going to do it like an EP, but like I said, studying the music business, as I was doing research and things like that, it would be more beneficial for me to do singles. And I wanted to make sure that once I got back out there that I was ready with consistent bangers back to back. So what I wanted to do to make it fun, I wanted to take it back to what made me love music again. Like I was getting back to myself and a lot of my influences was the 90s. So that's why like we swinging um, is took from the sample Shorty Swing My Way. Yeah. Um, but what I did is I picked like five beats that I really loved like back like with the 90s vibe and I found a way to make it my own. Right. So I do have things coming back to back to back. I have some really dope vibes, like some essential, some right. this one I wanted it to be fun. I wanted something that was gonna be universal. I just felt like, like I said, it was more like we swing it was a celebration thing. And it's kinda also the concept of um when you watch Finding Nemo, like just keep swimming. Right. Just keep swinging. Okay. Just like, keep swinging. Yeah, as long as you swing and you're still in the game. That's good. You know, so yes, I love it. Any mm -hmm. any any performances coming up? That we should be. Um, right could. now, I'm focusing more on uh, shout out to Chris O. Okay, really dope producer. He actually produced We Swingin'. Okay, but um, he's worked with a lot of artists, up and coming young producer, very wow. talented, and he actually allowed me to be the first songwriter on his songwriter team. Okay, so that's mainly been my big focus is because I I love the fact like when I'm in these studios, I'm meeting all kind of people now, right. and these aren't people like just. Oh, we just sitting around like no, we're always getting mm -hmm. things done, and it's actually getting us in rooms with you know other producers from all over the world, other videographers, mm -hmm. other songwriters. Like I just got connected with another songwriter. She's in songwriting camps in L.A. and Tennessee, and she liked my style of writing just from us vibing in the studio. So that's mainly what I've been focusing on is the networks and the connections and the back end. Okay. Um, now I may be doing a show again in Cali at the end of March. Okay. Um, shout out to Backyard Concerts, um, but we'll see. Okay, we'll see. And I like the way what you said. You just you was describing a lot of the business too, and the, mm -hmm. and you know, and you're learning. And mm -hmm. Can you tell the youth? Like I, I mentor the youth. That's, mm -hmm. I, I want to make sure they're safe and they understand. Mm -hmm. Can you tell them the process of an independent artist? Who a lot of it is knowledge and reading up on your stuff. I feel like in this day and age with um, technology. Try to learn some of everything mm. so you don't have to depend on people to get your content out. Right. And find your own niche. You know what I'm saying? Get into it for yourself and find your own voice because people are going to try to steer you this way, that way. Right. You got to have something to stand on right. that um, my mom always told me, never forget your why. Right. So find your why you do what you do. And then build your brand and everything around your why. Because once you lose your why, it don't matter what nobody else thinks. Because right. now you're just a puppet with strings. There you, go. you know? So that's a big message right there mm -hmm. to the kids is um, what she was saying is mm -hmm. make sure you understand your why. Mm -hmm. And make sure you hold on to that. Yeah. And make sure that you exploit that why. Mm -hmm. Because the, mu the music industry is very, very, very tricky. Yes. And... You have to stay true to yourself and mm -hmm. who you are, mm -hmm. or you'll be easily misguided to yeah, a situation where sure. you might take a lump sum of this to mm -hmm. sacrifice this to get to that. But in, in, in years to come, like you done lost everything because yeah. you, you didn't read the word or you the, didn't fine read the print. contract or the fine print, mm -hmm. or, or you don't understand your. Your ninety, your ninety tens, your seventy thirties. Yep. You understand yep, your three sixty yep. deals, mm -hmm. all that. So those are the verbiages that kids. If you want to be an artist and independent and learn streams and numbers publishing. and analytics and publishing, um, tap in with artists. She, you know, she, mm -hmm. she's an independent artist. She's figuring her way out through the matrix. She's very talented. And if you want to mm -hmm. know and understand entrepreneurship as an independent artist. You guys tap in with artist she man because she has something special going on and mm -hmm. you know that's why we want to spotlight you and, and talk about your intellect you know mm -hmm. because that's very big with me especially me um going for my doctorate in business mm -hmm. i like to talk about business right and what pushes it right. you know and you can get all these steps and everything that you think that you need but if you don't understand how the leverage or the mm -hmm. verbiage or the contracts 
or the the, the non disclosures the or the ninety eight NDAs, yep. then you are, you will fall into a trap like certain artists or mm-hmm. movie uh, characters. These people out here, like their contracts are are messed up. Yeah, and it's because either you didn't understand what's going on, and the industry is taking this from you, mm-hmm. and your manager taking this. Or your manager is taking this, and you pay. It's a lot of things. And first of all, too, it's okay. I'm a manager right. to have a manager to guide you, but make sure that your manager is, is managing you the right way and right, correctly, right. and and making sure that, that person has a life. I see a lot of managers that don't have nothing going on until they find a client, right. and that's wrong because now you're riding that client's wave. You need to help push that wave along. You don't need to be on that boat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. a different situation. Just no, give them yeah, guidance. Sure. You know, I have an uh, artist that I, I help manage. Her. Shout out to her. Mm-hmm. Her name is Gia. I don't know if you see her on um, Instagram. Gia, her, mm-hmm. really, really was. talented. Um, mm-hmm. She have a lot going on, and I'm in her corner. And I have another um, YouTuber. His name is Noah. He boxes, mm-hmm. and I'm helping him out, you know, and that's what I like to do. So I, I, I like the fact that you know your you're understanding about music and maybe you could pass that knowledge yeah. on to the kids. Yeah, get books. Like, I, I, to be honest, and some of it, even when I got to go back, I don't mind highlighting something and really, like, saying, there, okay, how do I break this down and break it down in your terms? Because that's what it is. I feel like a lot of people, when they see the big words, or they just, you get so bombarded. Um, like, yeah, you want to create, but I want to be able to eventually live off my creativity for yeah. the rest of my life. So the only way I can do that is I have to learn the verbiage. I have to be able to understand how I can monetize myself in the best way and also like not lose myself in trying to keep up with the trends mm-hmm. now. Right. Because I'm I'm a different type of vibe. Right. So yeah, like I I'll tell anybody like books, audio books, go to sleep with them playing. Right. Just so your brain your cognitive brain it's still like receptive of that information. I like that. And just keep playing it over and over and over and over and over and over until you get it. But manifestation. Mm-hmm. Believe in yourself. Yeah. I know when we talked when we was mm-hmm. at Buffalo Wild Wings, we was manifesting everything we're doing now. Mm-hmm. And look at it. It it's had coming. to happen because we was putting in the universe. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For sure. And they didn't deserve us anyway over there. <laughs> 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 they, didn't, they didn't deserve us. They was misusing yeah. the situation. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You know how the stories go with like, like, just say, hey, you know what? You were a big time superstar, but back in the day, you worked at McDonald's, mm-hmm. and they didn't see it, but you knew it. You kept telling them, "Hey, y'all better treat me nice. I'm about to be a superstar." Right. Look at you, mm-hmm. look at you. Mm-hmm. At the end of this year, probably you'll be right there, and I'll be actually. Can I get a ticket? <laughs> yeah, you want to come back on? I got you. Yeah, yeah. I got you. I want to. I want a ticket. I want to come. I want to come see you. VIP. I, yeah, definitely. Only because I, I don't yeah. want to be around nobody. I'm very um, antisocial, so. I know. Yeah, you know that. See? I know. I just I'm forced to come on the radio and do this. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's an alter it, ego. Yeah, it's yeah. an alter ego. Yeah, I I think it. the world needs to hear a lot of positive vibe, especially mm-hmm. from men like myself. Yeah, like it, it it doesn't. I think that the narrative is it doesn't look cool to be educated, but it should be like, hey, no, it's it's education is cool. Yeah, no, for sure. You know what I'm saying? I I come from especially the same area, or worse to, than anybody else. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I just I saw myself better. Mm-hmm. But I'm still them. I still represent my people. Right. Point blank. Right. Like win, lose, or draw I'm with them. We're gonna do what we gotta do. Right. But I'm gonna be the best of the best of my people. Right. Because when it comes down to it, if you if I if you raise your hand and you need me to speak, I'm gonna speak on right. what we got. And, and especially the whole world. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And that's what you're doing right now. Yeah, for you know, sure. You got any siblings that you uh you know that you have that you guys in the same corner that y'all um, share well, the same vibes? Well my my little brother, mm-hmm. he's actually a fashion designer. Oh, um, wow. And he's self-taught, um, undisputed designs. He was in Miami, and now he's in Atlanta. Okay. But I remember him. He used to sketch his outfits, and he used to be so upset. We'll be late to church and everything because he'd been a mess something up. But I literally, it's so crazy to watch him. Right. Like from when he started in a room and now like when he gets orders and he's like at 15K followers. Right. And just knowing that he really like put blood, sweat and tears in his right. brand and everything that he did. OK. So, yeah, that's good. Does he um, does he uh, style you? Um, no, I want him to. I want him so bad to right. do something for me. But. He kind of, um, I mean, he most definitely has his own opinions on okay. certain things. Like, I'll ask him, like, hey, what you think about this? Or, right. or, like, once I tell him the concept and me and him talk about it, 
Okay. But yeah. That's good. Mm-hmm. I love it, man. So hopefully he gets to design you before you blow up like yeah. that. that I, I that'd be dope. Him. So y'all can collaborate together. Yeah, I told him. I want to I wanna wear an undisputed design anything. And what he said? Oh, he with it. It's just a matter of time. I think a lot of it is just I got to get back to Atlanta where we actually stand still and right. doing that. Right, and right, right. So, but yeah. That's dope, man. Mm-hmm. I, I love it. So your whole family is talented like that. Your mom is mm-hmm. a minister. Your brother's a designer. Mm-hmm. You're an artist. Yeah, we all creative. I, I love ain't gonna it. Lie. We used to, my mom used to have us go to Goodwills all the time. And that's what we love to do. Like mm-hmm. fashion, all of that mm-hmm. stuff. Just making, like I said. Mm-hmm. Something out of nothing. Man, I love it, man. I, I yeah. think that um, as kids, mm-hmm. especially preacher's kids, we had a high, uh, man, it was so um, so heavy mm-hmm. because we, we they thought that since we were the preacher's kid that we were holier than thou. Like, you got to walk straight. Like, no, we have a life too. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that was a lot of pressure, yeah. you know, being a PK. But- I could say I handled it pretty well because now that I'm back in front of a mic, I, I give all thanks to um, how my dad did raise me as yeah. who I am right now. Yeah. You know, and, and that, that black man right there, he poured a whole lot of love into me. And and that's why, mm-hmm. why I'm doing what I'm doing now it because shows. I want to give back to him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, he paved the way. Yeah, no, I tell anybody, I, I love my church. Like, Pastor Poe, just the way he took us in and even, like, with our family and my mom right. and— like she was an intercessor at first, so okay. but like her her prayer walk, like she used to always be praying. Just but just also having a woman like that as an example. Right. My mom has always been. I I, I can't even say I've rarely ever heard her raise her voice. Mm. It's always been real peaceful, very just strong, and um. She just knew who she was, mm. even at times if I felt like I didn't, I would be upset or, like she used to always just talk to me and be like. What you upset for? Only kids go play in the playground. What you doing? Like, she always would, like, check me about my mental. Like, don't let nobody take you off your square. Like, keep your peace. Yeah. You know, things like that. So I I love, like, I say all the time, I thank God for my upbringing. I feel like it's kept me grounded even when I was in situations or in rooms where people probably wouldn't expect me to. I I think I know for a fact it was my foundation that kept me from doing certain things. Yeah. I tell people all the time, it's mm-hmm. my grandmother prayers mm-hmm. that the reason why I'm here right now, mm-hmm. even growing up in California and gang banging and doing all that craziness and mm-hmm. going to war in Iraq and Afghanistan, my grandmother and my dad prayers kept me alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, kept that spiritual blanket around me. Mm-hmm. You know, even though I probably should have reacted or did a lot of certain things mm-hmm. and I was involved in a lot of crazy things, but I'm here. Protection. You know, and that's mm-hmm. just the protection. Mm-hmm. And that's what your mom had for you. Yeah. So she knows, you know, hey, you know what? No matter what, my daughter's protected out mm-hmm. here and doing what you do, especially in this music industry where it's very tricky. It, yes. Yeah. Yes, it, it really it's very can tricky. Be. So mm-hmm. just be careful. I know you know what you're doing. You're a big girl. Mm-hmm. Um, Hopefully that you got all your legalities mm-hmm. in order when you're moving forward. And, um, we can't wait to hear more music, you know. Thank we you. want to swing some more. Yeah. Maybe you could do a concert here and, and uh, Emily, you know, let them know, like, hey, blow that, blow oh, it up. Yeah. Heck yeah. Oh, yeah. See, we're speaking into yeah, existence. Yeah, we're going to manifest that. This is manifestation right yeah, here. We're going to manifest yeah, I want to see you sure. right there perform. Mm-hmm. I want to be backstage, though. Of course. Okay. Of course. Right. So I'll be backstage no when you perform. Mm-hmm. And hopefully, um, you know, I, I get to witness that, you know. Yeah, and, for sure. And, and that's what we're speaking. We're I feel it's coming. I feel like a world tour is coming. Right. I have my own it's little coming. tour um, mm-hmm. this this year, three three tour. I don't know if you saw it. Um, yeah, around. on your page. Yeah, yeah. Shake mm-hmm. the uh, ground conference. Mm-hmm. Shake the room. I'm the keynote, so um, I'm ending all of the speeches with mine, and, and okay. we're gonna let the world know. And um, it's free, and mm-hmm. it's for the uh, for the community in Tampa. Mm-hmm. It's free, and we want to give back to everybody. That's dope. So hopefully, I see you in the building. Yeah, for yeah, sure. It's, it's free I'm- on April 27th. Okay, and I most definitely share it out. Yeah, share you know. it. I send it to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever we need to do. Um, we got four hundred seats. I think two hundred is already booked. Okay. So we want to make sure that house is packed. I'm giving these conferences away for free mm-hmm. this year. Three of them. Okay. Motivation, mental health, suicide awareness, mm-hmm. business, entrepreneurship. Yeah. Everybody all in the one room. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Knowledge is power. Yeah, so bring your peoples, bring everybody, and, and you mm-hmm. know, and that's where we get all the nerds meet right there. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's where we're gonna go, and we're gonna get Geek motivation. Squad. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want you to look into this camera and just give uh, a little motivation to to the kids and and let people know how they can find you on all your social media mm-hmm. networks and who you are, and tell the kids something. Okay. Well, the little I black girls. The little black girls. Okay. Well, my name is Artie She. AKA like she is art, make it easy for y'all. But um, the biggest thing I'll say is just be you and be gentle with you. And don't beat yourself up or try to compare yourself to the next person because when God instilled a purpose in you, that's for you. Nobody else could tell you how to be you. And just figure yourself out. But each day, like I said, just keep swinging. Like as, as long as you're still swinging, you'll never lose. So, yeah. Let them know how to find you. And you can also find me on Artishi. That's A R T I S S H I, on all platforms. And you can also check out She Speaks. That's S H I, S P E A K S podcast. And that's on Spotify, Apple Music, and all streaming platforms as well. There we go. So mm-hmm. you have it there. You have artist She. She does everything. Yeah. And I appreciate you for coming on. I am so Thank happy you. to be I in your in, in your energy, in your space. Um, we talked about that when we first met. Mm-hmm. And uh you you invited me in on your podcast. And mm-hmm. now look at the times is it's changed. Now you're the artist and I'm the the host of the podcast. Yeah. And what better way to show the world who you are from Tampa? Right. We 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 film in Tampa, so mm-hmm. why not bring out a Tampa native, someone Thank who the community you. loves, knows, mm-hmm. and can't wait mm-hmm. for you to hit your your, your stride. And we're mm-hmm. gonna be there clapping and supporting you I like we should it. be. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. it's positive. It's a positive message mm-hmm. for the community, for the 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 little black girls, the little black boys, like everybody who want to hear what she has to say, mm-hmm. which is so positive. Listen, tune in, um, and thank you guys for coming on to. To the late night podcast with RH2G, you know, um, it's crazy because it's been a year and a half, and me and her met, and I was a janitor. Now look what we doing now. So, if kids, right. if you think that you're not having no motion, you have motion. Just Big keep going. Motion. Just keep going. Mm-hmm. Things can change within a year, two mm-hmm. years, six months. Mm-hmm. It can change. And just listen to God. It's not you. It's what God wants you to do. Right. And if you guys need any daily motivation, um, you know, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, RH2G. And I have this event that's free that's in Tampa Bay, April 27th. Mm-hmm. Motivational speakers, mental health specialists, um, licensed therapists, everybody, entrepreneurs in one room talking about motivation how to help each other so we can win. We got to talk about our wins now. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys on our next podcast. JR out. Thank you. Boom. My name is Dr. JR McIntyre. I'm a certified motivational speaker and a social media influencer, and I can't wait to teach you how to excel your real estate business on the LinkedIn platform. LinkedIn is actually the most underrated social media platform. In my class, Elevate Your Real Estate Success or LinkedIn Mastery, you will learn three key principles. Number one, how to generate your high quality leads. Number two, get personal branding and excellence. Number three, strategic networking strategies. If you want to be a disruptor in the real estate industry, this class is definitely for you. I see you online and I can't wait to take your LinkedIn profile to the next level. JR out. Boom.